Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27 and this is Dean of Doom, the show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wads. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode was made in two days under very unusual circumstances, so I hope you'll bear with me. On the 28th of March, I received an email entitled BPRD Megawad from someone claiming to be his friend. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, BPRD is one of my all-time favorite Doom mappers. Attached to the email was a WAD file called Lunar Eclipse. The person who contacted me said they cobbled these maps together from, quote, all the stuff he ever sent me, and gave music to maps that didn't have their own custom tracks already. I'll say right now, the choice of Eris Falling's Ionian Isolation from TNT Revolution's transduction map is a very bold choice of menu music. While I'm more than eager to investigate anything that has any chance to be new BPRD work, even outtakes and rejects, I'm also cynical by default, so my hopes aren't terribly high. Due to the out-of-the-blue nature of this episode, I decided to record my first playthrough of Lunar Eclipse and pad out my abbreviated reviews with clips of my reactions to it. I have no plans to make this a regular thing, so if you dislike the format, don't worry, it's not sticking around. You know how the show works, but let's blaze through it anyway. Every map gets one one grade for quality and one for difficulty. On the quality side, the grades go from A to F. Grade A levels are fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. Difficulty grades go from X to E. X for extreme, E for easy, A through D in between. Keep in mind, I probably won't have the same ideas about what makes a great level as you do, but that's okay. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is about spreading the joy of doom, so let's do so. Before we start, the rules are we play on ultraviolence and must pistol start each level. Normally, I need to play the wand twice before reviewing it, but we're gonna scratch that for today, again due to the rapid gestation period of this episode. Saves are allowed, and we go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions when it's just not worth it. I play on Z-Doom with compatibility set to strict. Also, keep in mind that I wrote these reviews right after playing each level. Now, to the WAD. Map 1, Where Am I? An ominous but tantalizing opener, Where Am I starts with a whisper in a room full of roasting corpses. This midi's from Awaken. BPRD's uh, alien map that was unfinished, wow. Oh my god, he loved those textures, and it's like, we're on some kind of... It's a circle. That no doubt means that we're on a UFO. It took me a while to find the way out of this first room. I should uh, lead off with the uh, clarification that my first playthroughs of BPRD maps are usually very frustrating experiences, so... Uh, okay. Oh, oh, what's that? What's that? I found it. I found it. All right. Oh, look at this. The ensuing fight looks intimidating, but if you check the perimeter, you can find a super shotgun, plasma, rocket launcher, and some ammo for them. I have to say, this huge UFO arena increased my hype level by several notches. It's simple. Okay, I, I, I won't I won't overpraise it. It is simple, and there's definitely some errors, but I cannot tell you how jazzed I am to be playing a BPR. This, I mean, this might be BPRD. All the signs are there. It's a UFO. There's pain elementals. There's... <laughs> Miscalibrated fights, um, the, the lighting is very BPRD, with the, I'm actually gonna show you on the auto map, I keep trying to illustrate it on the auto map, but it's kind of like Nuts 3, honestly. Where Am I has some irregularities, and it's clearly not exceedingly fleshed out, but it's a rush to be playing quite possibly the first new BPRD map to see the light of day in 15 years. Grade B, difficulty C-. Map 2, The Woods. The woods looks like some kind of primitive grove prototype. It's pitch dark, littered with trees, and scored by an eerie, meandering midi whose source I couldn't track down. Possibly a BPRD original. This forest is filled with specters, and there's one mean revenant chucking missiles at you from the exit on the hill. It's so dark. I think this this is honestly darker than grove, because there's no red sky as a background. You know what, I can use the specters to block the revenant missiles. There's the revenant. And... Where's that arch file though? Like, I seriously, I have nothing to kill that arch file and nothing to block this revenant missile. Other than that, this map is flimsy from a gameplay perspective. There are two secrets you can cut through the trees for, and BPRD leaves just enough shotgun shells along the hiking path for you to eliminate the arch file swimming in the pond of death, but it's still kind of a pain. Even with ambiance on its side, I don't love this map. Grade C, difficulty D. Map three, drive the green. What? Okay, hold on. Is this? This is a golf course? <laughs> I never knew I needed a Doom golf course in my life before playing Drive the Green. Flat, bizarre, and rudimentary as it is, I get a kick out of details like the tee boxes, bunkers, flag sticks, nicely manicured fairways, and par 3 pond you can drown in. What the f***? The combat is ludicrous, though. You'll need a red key to access the clubhouse and exit, which seem to spontaneously appear in my inventory here. Whoa, 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 what? 
What, 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 what? After consulting a map editor, I determined that you need to walk through all three shadows cast by the flags at night, and an offstage voodoo doll will be conveyed into the key. Drive the Green is 90s doom cute given a sprucing with some boom trickery, and made utterly surreal by another MIDI I've never heard before. Grade B minus, difficulty D. Map four, The Iron Giant. A perplexing little showcase, the Iron Giant gives you a chain gun, a lot of bullets, and no health at all to battle a crowd of zombies having a standoff with a titular metal man. I loved the Iron Giant as a kid, so it's downright uncanny to see him show up in a Doom wad. The Equinox MIDI is probably an insert from BPRD's friend, but it certainly fits here since this map is short and transitional. It's too bad the Giant's arms don't look right, or the centerpiece would have been perfect. Alright, I see the flaw. His, uh, his underarms are missing. Those are just kind of like mid text just slapped on there. Grade D, difficulty D minus. Map five, Archvile Park. Okay, you can't you can't be serious. Come on. What we're starting to test the definition of what qualifies as a Doom map here. Archfile Park is a square lot with seven Archies in it and nowhere to hide except some craters with a few rockets and medikits in them. The Vile's speed and staggered attacks coupled with the pit's steep edges which make it hard to stop on a dime at the bottom can create serious problems for you if you're not constantly moving. Alright, this is ridiculous. I don't have nearly enough room for this. Maybe A1s could do this, not me. Uh... No, no, shit. <sighs> I had to come back to this one later, but I did manage to beat it on UV with a save or two. Archvile Park works fine as a concept, but it looks like virtually no effort was invested in making it look presentable. I guess if BPRD made nuts, he could have made this. Grade D, difficulty A-. Map 6, Doomopolis. Lunar Eclipse sure is full of surprises. This city map compensates for its chuckle-worthy lack of detail with excessive carnage and some screwball design decisions. <laughs> Mind leaving! <laughs> What are the Nazis? Okay, you know what? I'm pretty sure at this point that this is the Friends map, not BPRD's map, but I'm still <laughs> enjoying the hell out of it. At this point, I'm playing this wad out of pure curiosity. Besides, the first two maps absolutely felt like BPRD. Perhaps there's more to come. Anyway, I'm not sure that Doomopolis is meant to be as well-balanced as it is. There's sufficient BFG and shotgun ammo to clear the crowds, just enough health and mega armors to get by, and once you tightrope walk to the chain gunner, you can start picking off the imps dancing around on what I assume are giant sewage tanks. It's a grind, but Doomopolis is cheerful enough for me to want to finish it properly. So many Mindleben. Shut up. Alright, this is by far the most substantive map yet. I am actually pretty impressed, at least with the attention he gave it. It's not just one square, you know. I just noticed the, <laughs> this hyper-detailed dumpster amidst the giant blocks of, you know, buildings that are in multiples of 128 units tall. Eliminate this deaf pain elemental and take the elevator to the roof. Grade B minus, difficulty C plus. Map seven, Man on Wire. Well, this is something else I've never seen before. Man on Wire is essentially the last level copy pasted, but the four tallest buildings are now so tall you can't even see the ground with mouse look. You have to pick off the monsters atop the buildings to progress, tiptoe across the wires, and don't fall, Lamau. No, oh God, wait. Ah. <laughs> Oh, okay. The trickiest part here is running to grab the extra chain guns without getting splattered by revenant missiles. There's no health until the very end, so beware. The last building will prompt you to take a leap of faith. It's the only place you can jump off without telefragging yourself. Jumping off backwards doesn't seem intended, but it's worth it for the view. For its unusual premise, I'll give Man on Wire a C, Difficulty C, and the 2009 Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature. Map 8, A Dream of Flight. Okay, this is pretty funny. We're just in the air? Are you serious? Look at this. Look at this nonsense. Pain elementals. <laughs> this music is perfect. <laughs> A Dream of Flight gives new meaning to the term skybox. On its own, this isn't even a map, really. But placed right after Man on Wire, I think it's chuckle-worthy enough not to fail. The use of Ancient Aliens intermission music is also pitch perfect. Grade D minus, difficulty C. Map 9, Broken Bones. An inexplicable horror show of acute angles, screwy texturing, or node building, or I don't even know what, bad resource balancing, awkward combat, and Nazis, Broken Bones just might be the most haphazard map I've ever played. My eyes really hurt. It's so much pink, and it's like a unhealthy kind of pink. <laughs> My eyes hurt even more looking at those SS. Everything about this is horrible, but at the same time, it's weirdly, it draws me in a little bit. Like, 
What am I doing? I honestly can't tell if it was intentionally designed this way or just slapped together in 15 minutes. One thing I know for sure, this isn't BPRD's style. It actually kind of reminds me more of Benjo Gami's Down the Drain from last year, except it gives even fewer shits than he does, and it's much less enjoyable. This is one of the more awkward cyber demons I've had to deal with, and without careful rocket management in this megasphere, which I don't think is supposed to be reachable, Broken Bones would be much harder to 100%. I just noticed there have only been three doors in this whole wad so far. The golf course clubhouse, the one in Iron Giant, and the Dumopolis exit. Really odd. Broken Bones is just abstract and experimental enough to tease a D- out of me with difficulty B+. Map 10, Sapphire Slaughter. Sapphire Slaughter is the first map in this wad I really hate. It's blue daba dee daba die alright, containing just about everything blue in Doom 2 except Wolfenstein SS ironically, and gives you exactly zero health, taunting you with a soul sphere tucked under John Romero's chin. Okay, I'm just gonna end the map right there. Yep, that's the end of the map. The stupidly named Sapphire Slaughter caps off on an awful torch maze encounter with two revenants and a lot of zombie men. It's probably the hardest room in the wad so far. This is terrible. This is like some Mach 2 shit. No. Revenants? No. No. No, 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 that's a big no. I really hope BPRD isn't responsible for this. Grade F, difficulty B+. Map 11. Eye of the Beholder. What? What the hell? Oh my god, what? Are you serious? <laughs> this midi. <laughs> oh, okay. That is a horrible sound. Oh my god. Um, can you fall between these? Oh, yes you can. Everybody dance now. This is just horrific. It's like kind of hard on the eyes, kind of satisfying, except the thing flickers horribly. Oh my god, this is gonna be a nightmare. Easily the most painful map in the wad so far, Eye of the Beholder is a death trap. A big flickering room full of platforms, poison, tomatoes, and meatballs. The map loads you up with rockets and health, but it doesn't matter, because falling, face rocketing, and getting mobbed by angry floating heads is certain death and practically inevitable. You're literally never not platforming for your life in this map, and the worst part is, even if you survive the initial surge of spherical scoundrels, they act as one big floating barrier between you and the exit that you have to whittle down at your peril. It took me over 50 deaths to clear this stupid map, and I got nowhere near 100% kills. I don't know who in their right mind would enjoy this. Grade F, difficulty X minus to simply exit with saves, X to exit with no saves, X plus to UV max saveless. Good luck, Doom Gods. I'm just kidding, don't play this. Map 12, 3D glasses. You won't have any time to appreciate the trippy visuals before the demons start flooding in. Grab a backpack, press the skull switches, run to one of the corners for a BFG, and get ready for action. I can't believe I'm saying this, but 3D glasses is an adrenaline rush, and one of the most innovative slaughter rooms I've seen in a while. Take a look. This is so intense! God damn, and grabbing Berserks is- that's a brilliant mechanic. Who are you? Who is the author of these maps? Spammy and trollish monster choices aside, 3D Glasses is the most fun I've had playing Lunar Eclipse so far. Juggling health pickups, forced weapon switches, arch files, low ammo, and the psychedelic surroundings is surprisingly entertaining. Once again, I'm pretty sure there's no way this is BPRD, but 3D Glasses is the first inkling I've gotten that the person responsible for this wad might kind of know what they're doing. Grade B+, difficulty A-. Map 13, Pin Art. Oh dear god. Oh. Okay, okay. This is ridiculous. And you stole the mucus flow music, which irks me considerably. Oh, there's frame rate droppage. This is horrible. Oh, this is horrible. You know, the WAD file for this was 36 megabytes, and I was thinking that's kind of odd unless it's like a, you know, an actual full megawad, but this is just, this explains everything. Ugh. I just went for that because it looked like something... I'm not gonna finish that map. <laughs> A few minutes later, I went back and finished that map. With patience, safe scumming, and an unhealthy vendetta against the map's creator, I got every possible kill in pin art. 
One Revenant and one Pinky are unreachable, but I made sure the rest got the saw. Something must be really wrong with me, because maxing this gave me an actual sense of accomplishment. Grade F, difficulty A+. Map 14, Better Games. The seesaw swings upward once again. Better Games is a three-pronged battle against three board games with demonic pieces. The twist is, each fight you initiate also spawns an arch file. All your weapons are locked in with the monsters, so don't bite off more than you can chew. All right, screw this, I'm not gonna be a pansy. Screw you, Archfile. Got one. I guess we can hide behind the, the box, though. Or the... Because technically, this is a wall. Yes! Excellent, okay. At this point, I'm incredibly confused and vaguely annoyed. This started off as a BPRD megawatt, and now I'm playing backgammon with a bunch of demons. Ignoring the questions pinballing around my head, I'll give this map a B for its clever premise and decent execution, with a B for difficulty. Map 15, you better run. I'm taking damage already. 13 enemies, oh my god. Is this... You know what this is like already? It's a, uh, it's a run from it reference. Which checks out. I hate this. Everything's dead. <laughs> the specter just didn't even notice me. Okay, get out of my face. It's making me a little nervous. Oh, that's making me a lot nervous. That's making me a lot nervous. Um. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna get 100% kills, but I got out. Okay. So, as I understand it, if you make it to the exit, you go to the secret map, called Escaped, which isn't much. You escaped the pain zone. Hmm. There's a missing, uh, section here, I wonder... Uh, come on, man, what is this bullshit? What do you want? Here's a hint. Here's a hint. Here's a hint. Okay, give me the hint, please. This is an F. It's an F. It's an F. Every... Here's a hint is an F. F! Type idclev17 to escape. And if you don't escape, this happens. Okay, it's it's like E1, or, yeah, E1M8 floor, where if your health goes under a certain threshold, you level ends. Ooh, the pain zone! What? Yeah, the pain zone is pretty self-explanatory. As a trilogy, You Better Run and its two branches are a good idea badly executed. If you nail the platforming at the start and get the BFG, map 15 is a cinch, and you'll never see the pain zone. That might be for the best. It's a comical mess that doesn't even have an exit, so it's an F with no difficulty grade because it's impossible. Escaped is also an F with no difficulty grade because it's not even a map. You Better Run? I guess I'll give it a D because it's more forgiving than Run From It, and uses the 20 damage exit floor pretty creatively. Difficulty C. Where the heck was I? Oh yeah, map 17, the corridor is this. What the hell? What the hell is this? Smush. At this point, I'm kind of wondering what I'm doing with my life. The corridor. The corridor. Grade F, difficulty E. Map 18, the final tech base. Okay, now now it's just Mach 2. This is a disaster. This is a disaster. It's not even, like, good bad. It's just bad bad. Yep, that about sums it up. The final tech base is a misshapen, irreverent idiocy that pets many of my peeves. Random voodoo dolls, unreachable, useless secrets. <laughs> The three secrets are at the tops of the computer panels with nothing on them. Hyperactive teleport lines. Stop! 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 Oh my god, what was that? And unorthodox damaging floors. Why does that hurt? It's just floor. It also manages to mutilate a classic evolution midi and seemingly poke fun at me. Doom cute. Hmm. You know, I'm starting to think this was a targeted attack. I'm just saying, I've been talking about Doom cute a lot lately. This is a TNT track. You son of a bitch. I have no idea what I'm playing anymore. Grade F, difficulty B. Map 19, what have I become? In which the roles are reversed. It's like Icon of Sin or something. Wait, 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 wait. This is Icon of Sin. Yeah, see, he's like the Doom Marine, and I'm like the Icon of Sin. From here on out, it's probably better if you just watch to the end. <sighs> Please say this is the end. Please. 
Wow. Yep, he killed the Icon of Sin. He sure did. What have I become? My sweetest friend. Everyone I know goes away in the end. Yeah, that's how I feel. Hurt. Goodbye, cruel world. What? Okay, you know what? Jesus Christ! April Fools! Got him! I admit, I do feel like a fool for not seeing this coming. I can't believe you actually went through and beat all those terrible levels. I can't believe you even finished Eye of the Beholder, Pin Art, and um, the blue one that I can't remember the name of. Like, you really must have no life if you're willing to put up with that kind of punishment, even after you guess it was all a setup. Well, it wasn't completely awful. Delinquent, did you really make all of these? Yeah, and I made them as annoying and painful as I possibly could, and I'm actually pretty good at that. You know, because I'm a pain elemental. Well then, I have to say, good job. What? It's no CAC award winner, but you made a whole set of maps all by yourself. You must have learned a lot. With all the new graphics and music changes, not to mention a lot of these ideas are pretty good. The board game's map, 3D glasses, I even kind of like the golf course. I mean, yeah, but it was a joke. And I made you look stupid, and yo, know, that was totally worth it, but it's not like I'm gonna do this again or anything. Well, I'm proud of you, delinquent. Ew. Oh. Final grade, D, difficulty, C+. Really? I didn't fail? You got some low standards. <gasps> and now I get to give you a Dean's List! Oh, this is so exciting! <sighs> now for my Dean's List for the delinquent. Valedictorian, Map 12, 3D Glasses. Salutatorian, Map 14, Better Games. Class President, Map 11, Eye of the Beholder. And the dunce cap goes to, well, I could probably give it to a few, but I'll go with the final tech base, map 18. Good work, delinquent. Thank you all very much for watching. And please feel free to share your thoughts on the delinquent squad down below. He'd love to hear what you think, and I'll heart your comments to let you know he's read them. Now, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my generous patrons. AR, Aaron Allen, Agile Jackson, Agu XYZ, Akali, Alec Wehrman, Alexander Sumenkoff, Alex Topper, Alex Max, Andrew Luther, Bo Higginbotham, Builder Sith, Bitefire, Kappa Bitch, Captain Wave, Collie Bluefin, Cheese Wheel, Chris Duthat, Chris O'Neill, Christopher Hart, Christophine Place, Crafty One Cal, Dan, Dave Davidson, Delirium, Dorothy Miller, Egg Boy, Ember, Emma Essex, Faithful, Felix Wilson, Francis T218, Furnace, General Roasterock, Glenn Marmon, Griffin Upchurch, Have a Seat, Holy Hell Revealed When, In Captivity, Jeff Hibbert, Jeff Shirilla, Jose Ballestero, Josh Ballard, Just Some Schmuck, Just Great 98, Camille Bernadotte, Killplane, Leon Staten, Logan Lazalda, Mark Rowland, Master Drew 117, Matt, Matthew Gower, Michael Akins, Mixer, MK2021, Mocha Mothman MM47, Mosicon, Myolden, Nafferty, Nathan Beats, Neurometry, Nick Machado, Knights 108, Number 26, Omnibot, Orion Burke Poole, Painful Hill 72, Pezavang Zhaj, please tell me if I'm saying that wrong, Philip Coffee, Pixel Perfect PT, Pyro Shi, Randy A, Reese, Rune, Sega Monkey, Sid Menon, Space Detective Noi, Space Clanka, Stone Mason, Stupid Nick, Tara Kishino, The Cloptologist, The Dinosaur Heretic, TJG1289, Drillby Trillion, Turbine 2K5, Ultra Cow, Vertigo, why Bimo Not a Crab, and William Huber. Thank you. I appreciate you all very much. This is Mount Payne 27, and I'll see you on graduation day, for real this time.